All right, guys, welcome back to the channel today. And today we're starting a new series. Since we ended Ranking of Kings recently, I thought it's time to do a new series. And I scratched my head for a while thinking what would be a good series to do until I thought of a series I really wanted to check out personally and I know is loved by a lot of people. So today we checked out Odd Taxi episode one. And where do I begin? Like, le like, legitimately, where do I begin? This series... Before I even get into that, let me say, the opening is a banger. I love the opening. Sets the tone for the show perfectly. It's a literal just vibe and a half listening to it. I loved it. It's fantastic. Even the ending's catchy, but the opening, a total banger. But, dude. Oh, man. I see why so many people like this show just off of episode one alone. This show feels like it has so many layers in it already. It's crazy. Watching this episode, I literally thought to myself, like, I can't miss anything. All this stuff's going to come back around at some point. All of it is going to be relevant at some point, And I'm going to have to remember it all. So that's enough of me talking about it. Let's just get into it because fuck do we have a lot to talk about. So, our episode begins with our main character, Otokawa, who is a walrus, which I love that concept, by the way, but uh, that they're all animals. Great, great concept, but begins with Otokawa listening to the radio, and he hears a news article, actually, about a missing girl, a missing high school girl, and they're, and they're talking about how she went missing previously the night before and how no one has heard anything about her but just keep that in your mind for right now guys we'll come back to that but uh his first fare into the taxi is none other than this one kid now this one kid's your typical probably high school kid you know just typical kid coming around and he's obsessed with social media as a lot of people are and i i felt what they were trying to do with that, by the way. He's obsessed with his posts getting lots of likes and lots of traction on social media, which I'm sure a lot of people can understand and feel the same way. And Onidura, or Onikawa, I should say, my bad, Otakawa, he says it's just rubbish. He doesn't care about it. But the kid differs, you know? He's like, nah, you don't get it, old man. These posts go viral off the silliest, stupidest things, like... Posts about happiness, posts about traumatic things, posts that are funny, posts that are emotional, all this stuff. And he showcases that by taking a picture and a selfie with him and Odu and Odokawa and posting it online with this completely untrue caption. Now, you know, just random stuff. You know, they have a conversation. So Odokawa drops this kid off at his destination and as he's leaving, he realizes the kid... Actually, my bad. Before we even get into that, I meant to... I forgot to mention that. As they're driving, they get stopped by a pair of cop brothers who supposedly know Otakawa. And the older of the brother asks him, if you've seen this man. Now, this man is supposedly a one criminal and is very dangerous. But Otakawa instantly recognizes, like, Don't, aren't you friends with him? Don't you know this guy? To the older brother's dismay who tries to sweep it under the rug. And he says he hasn't seen him, so the brothers let him go. And as they're leaving, the brother, the older brother tells his younger brother that, yeah, you can't trust that guy. You can't trust him. He lies about every single thing, no matter what. Which is very suspicious, you know? He stopped him, but then he accuses him. But anyway, then we get to the part where we uh, drop this kid off, and, um... As he's driving away, he realizes that the kid left his phone in the backseat of the car. So the kid actually ends up calling his own phone, asking him if he can drop his phone off for him. And he asks him to check his phone to see if his picture went viral. So he does, but as he's checking the phone, he realizes that uh, in the background of that picture, he sees that very same person the cop asked him about in the background, supposedly staring at them. Very interesting. 
You'll have to bear with me a bit on this, guys. Like, I just finished the episode, and I got a lot of stuff going in my head. I'm trying to remember everything. I wrote it all down, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm trying to uh, convey. So you got to bear with me a little bit. So after that scene, we actually go to the clinic, and he meets one of his old buddies who's the doctor. And they start rambling about normal stuff, you know, normal banter, talking about Bruce Springsteen and We Are the World with Stevie Wonder and all that. That got, that got a kick out of me. Very, very random. And then he talks to this nurse, actually, a nurse that's in there who is in Alpaca. And, you know, they just start talking about stuff, too. They start talking about the radio station he listens to. And she actually has an eraser. For some reason. A uh, limited edition eraser. That's only one in the whole world. And. She ends up giving it to him. For some reason. And it just seems very strange. You know. And as he's leaving the office. He gives the nurse a quick look back. You know. Just seeing how her behavior was a bit strange. And a little unorthodox. He just gives her a look. As he's leaving. And everything seems normal. So he exits the clinic. And I did forget to mention, actually, before he heads to the clinic, he's in his apartment looking at a news report about the missing girl incident. Incident, And then all of a sudden he starts talking in his apartment like he's talking to someone. But supposedly there's no one there. And he starts saying things like, oh, why? Why did you come here? Like, you can leave at any time, you know, you can leave any time you want. And on the news report, as they were talking about this girl, they said she ended up getting into a taxi. And with the way he's talking, it makes me think, like, is that girl in his apartment? Did he, like, take this girl to his apartment for some reason? And it's very strange, because the way he's talking, it's implying, like, he didn't kidnap her or anything. Like, he's saying, you can leave at any time if you want. Like, why did you come here? And it's just very interesting. And that leads into, actually, as he's leaving the clinic, he runs into that older cop brother from earlier who supposedly has some information linking him to this incident, and he wants to look into his car. So he does, and he finds out that Otakawa has a dash cam camera. And he suspects that if this girl was in his taxi at some point, that he can get information from it. So he takes the he takes the video card from it and he says that if anything else comes up that he should come to him but he shouldn't go to the police which is definitely a red flag and Odikawa asks him why and he says I don't know but maybe if something happens like that an armed criminal might come and kill you all of a sudden basically threatening him to keep his mouth shut and to just do his normal routine. And it's a real eye raiser. It really is. It's very interesting. Those two got to be linked somehow. And we'll see that later in the episode. But from that scene, we actually transition to a bar, actually, with the doctor from before, a giant gorilla, of course. And like I said, bear with me, guys. I wrote all this down. I got so much notes. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, we transition to a bar, and we see the doctor come in, and he's talking with his one friend, Kakihana. And they actually start to discussing Onikawa amongst themselves, and he just says flat out, like, I wish he would go to a different doctor, you know, because he's very strange. There's just something fundamentally off about him. He's odd. Like... He's very sarcastic, but it's like he doesn't have emotions, you know? He's just very detached. And he feels really uncomfortable around him. And they start, they start discussing him a bit like that. And as they're going on about that, he actually gets a call on his phone from one of the people that works for him. And she says that some of their medicine is actually missing from the clinic. Some psychotropic drugs, which... If you guys know what that is, it's some pretty heavy shit. Like, it's not something that you want to go missing. It will fuck people up. So he hears that that's missing, and she asks the doctor, like, who was working there today? And subsequently, in that moment, we transition to Odikawa picking up another passenger who just happens to be that nurse 
from earlier. And it's just very, very strange. You know, what's going on? This show just has layers on top of layers. And, you know, he picks her up, obviously, because he's a taxi driver. He needs to get paid. So he drives her around. And our episode ends with that very same criminal we saw earlier in the episode, apparently watching them from a distance as he trades what looks like cash for that cam footage to the older brother cop implying that they definitely do know each other and that something else is going on here what it is we don't know yet but it's very interesting and that's how our episode ends like i might have sped through that guys but i could have spent like 30 minutes discussing the intricacies of this episode like it's kind of crazy this episode took me an hour to watch honestly just because of how much attention to detail i was paying to it and this show is very, very interesting. Like every, I feel like every little conversation, every little detail is going to come back up at some point. Like for instance, the whole, throughout the entire episode today, we got constant like showings of this idol group for some reason. Throughout the entire episode, everywhere we went, everyone was listening to this idol group. And I can't, I just can't help but feel like they're going to come and play a big part. We even saw in our next episode preview that they're supposedly a part of it. So maybe I'm not too far off, but. And then there's that instance with the eraser. You know, just some minute little detail like that that would just get brushed aside. I feel like is going to play a very big role. I don't know. It just feels like something very random that would just get put in. But from what I've seen from this episode, I don't think anything is going to be random. I really don't. Like, I'm very glad I decided to do this series, guys, because this series is great. It really is. I enjoyed the first episode tremendously, and I'm extremely excited to get into the next one. I very much want to see how this mystery unfolds, and I hope you guys would like to do that with me. So, in the comments, let me know how you felt about this episode, you know? Like I said, very interesting, honestly. Very, honestly, cool concept that I'd love to see how they explore it more. So, you guys let me know what you thought about it down below. But, I think that'll be it for today's episode, you guys. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments. Like, there were times in the video I had to backtrack and be like, oh, wait, no, this happened first. And there's just a lot of stuff that happened. So if I missed anything at all, if I missed any important details, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to read them. But like I said, that'll be it for today's episode, guys. Very excited for the next one. So until then, I hope you guys have a great day, week, month, and year. And even until then, I hope you continue to have one. But until then, deuces and have a blessed day.